Hi guys, I've seen there's quite a lot of confusion about modding for Homeworld Remastered, um, and that's quite understandable. It's a pretty dense topic and there's almost no documentation, or at least there wasn't any documentation until recently. Um, so I just thought I'd make a very quick video explaining how to get into it, what kind of files you're going to want to need before you get started, and then just how to upload something to the workshop. So the first thing we're going to need is the Homeworld Remastered Toolkit. Now make sure this says All up here and has tools ticked, because otherwise it won't show up. So Toolkit, here it is, and you want to install that. The next thing we're going to need is we're going to need to locate our Homeworld directory. It's just here for everybody, it's not, not related to your Windows user or anything, this path, so this will work for you as well. So it's Steam Apps Common Homeworld. And the tools that we just installed are actually located in this same directory. They're under Gearbox Tools, Workshop Tools, and they're all in here. The main two to notice are Archive.exe and WorkshopTool.exe. One last thing I strongly recommend, even though it is optional, is you should get the Visual Studio Code Editor. It's uh, If you've ever used Notepad++, it's, it's a little bit like that, but a bit more powerful. I, again, really strongly recommend that you use an editor if you're considering modding this game because it makes everything so much less painful. Um, there are plenty of other editors just like VS Code as well. There's Sublime, which is a popular one, but yes, strongly recommend doing something like this. Now, what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to extract all of the base files that we can. You don't have to extract all of the base files to make a mod, but I would recommend doing this to begin with because it provides an excellent frame of reference for later, if you want to change some number, or you want to call a function, having all of these files unpacked and accessible to you is going to be a really great reference. The first thing we need to know is where is this data that we can unpack. It's located in Homeworld RM, data, and it's these files basically. A big file is essentially the same as a zip file, it's just an archive file type. So once we unpack these, we'll be able to look at the actual Lua files and directories that are going to make up our mod. Uh, or in fact any mod. To do this, unfortunately, we're going to need to use the command line. Um, I know some people have never used it in their life, but it's it's actually not that bad. We're just going to type things into this terminal. Follow my lead. So, if we go up to the homeworld directory, we go into our tools directory, which is here, this one, workshop tool. I'm going to copy this path, and we're going to go cd, quote, paste that in, using right click, and then close the quote, and we end up here. So to make this easier on ourselves, um, I'm just going to get those big files that we need to extract, and I'm going to put them somewhere in this directory, just so that this tool has any easier time accessing them. Otherwise we have to do a whole bunch of typing. Um, so I'm going to go back here to data. I can grab whatever archives I need, and put them in, in, in here somewhere. I've already actually done this. I've put them in this one, RM complete source. That's got my big files that I want to extract. And what we're going to produce is this, which is all of the files that are modifiable for us in the game. So we're going to extract those big files, and the tool that we're going to use is Archive.exe. So you can just start typing arc or something like that, press tab and it will complete it. Archive.exe can't be run by itself, so if I try and run it, it's just going to give me help documentation. What it's expecting in particular are two arguments. So we have minus "-a", for the big file. Uh, I showed you where I put those, they're in our own complete source, so let's do that. Then we're going to extract it somewhere, I'm going to, as an example, I'm going to extract it to a directory called one or two ships extract. And that looks very fancy, looks very technical, looks like we're hacking into the matrix, and if we look, uh, Homeworld 2 ships extract has been created and it has the data that we need. Now you can repeat this process. Um, just press up on the directional keys and it'll go back to your last command by the way. Uh, you can repeat this process for all of the files that you want to extract. And I would strongly recommend extracting everything so that you have, you have access to a good reference of where to put different files and how to implement different things in your mod. Okay, so let's actually just make a mod. This is fairly simple. Uh, I, this is a completely arbitrary place in my hard drive. So I'm going to do make a new folder, we'll call it fast ints, because what our mod is going to do is it's going to make interceptors fast, or faster than they already are. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and open this in code. Cool. So here we are. And it's just an empty directory. This is not currently a mod. All we have to do to turn it into a mod, though, is we have to add one file called keeper.txt. It doesn't have to have anything inside of it. It just needs to exist. And this directory, our fast ints directory, with keeper text in it, is literally a mod. I mean, it's not much of a mod because it doesn't change anything about the game currently. But as long as this file is present, the game can read this directory as a valid mod directory. So, how do we make interceptors 1.5 times faster than normal? Uh, if we look at our mod currently, there's not much clue as to what we're supposed to do. Do we make a folder? Do we make a file? Do we edit keeper text even? Well, that's why I recommended doing the initial step of extracting everything beforehand. Because now we can see how the mod is supposed to be shaped. Um, they've got keeper text here, and they've got all of these other files that we currently don't have. Now, there's not much use importing all of these files to our new mod, because we, we're not interested in changing these files. The only file we're interested in is probably ship, and somewhere in here is the Higarin interceptors, the definition. So, this is why I recommend code especially. I'm going to open this up in code, which I've already done, and I'll show you how I find the file. It's just control P, and I type in interceptor, and it shows me every interceptor file here. There's the ship file, that sounds pretty good to me. Uh, so I'm going to copy it, and you'll notice also, and this is very important, it's actually a subdirectory of this higher up ship directory. So we go ship, and it's inside there. That's important because, remember, we're overlapping our files on top of these files. So we need to get the directory structure exactly correct. So in our fast ints over here, I'm going to make a new folder called ship. And inside of there, that's where we're going to paste our Higarin Interceptor. Now, as it happens, we actually don't need all of these files. Remember that we're only interested in changing the minimum amount of files that we need to, really. That will keep our mod size down. The only file that we need to change is this one, the ship file. Well, that's because we have the definitions for the speed of the unit in this file. Thruster max speed is its strafing speed, sideways and main engine max speed is its top forward speed. So all of these other files, including the model hod file, we don't need these because we're not interested in changing them. So I'm just going to get them all, clear them out, and that reduces the R mod to just a single file, basically. So to make them fly 1.5 times faster, I'm just going to times their speeds by 1.5. Um, once they've got their speed upgrade, which is also a multiplier, the number that we get out of the end might not be quite what we expect, but before they get the speed upgrade, it will be indeed literally 1.5 times the speed that they had previously. Okay, so we need to tell the game where to find our mod, and we also need to tell the game that it's supposed to be running a mod. Well, to do that is we just go to it in the Steam library, and we're going to edit, we're going to right click on it, and properties. Now, there are launch options down here. Don't worry that I already have a few, you actually don't need either of these, although the second one is very useful. We're going to need this one, Mod Data Path. So as you might expect from the name, this is just the path to the local mod data. Now it begins its search for this data in the Homeworld directory in Steam. This could be a little bit inconvenient for you. I've made our fast ins I've just moved it, copied it. I've put it in here for convenience. But I'll show you a way that you can avoid having to always have your mods live in this directory. But for now, for simplicity, this is the easiest way to do it. Just have your mod in the home mod directory, and then you can just type the name of its root directory in. So fast ints, fast ints, close it, done. So really quick, one other way I like to do this, personally, is I like to have just a single static name in our launch options. Then I can close it forever and not have to worry about them again. Um, and the way we're going to make that work is we're going to have a shortcut directory called a symbolic link in, that lives in here. And it's got, got a point to wherever we want to point it. So the best way I think to do this is look link and then it's slash j. Active was the name of what I wanted to call it for a static name. Then I'm going to grab whatever the directory is of my actual mod. 
and I can put it in as the second argument and it creates what's called, they call it a junction um, but if you see we've got a sort of shortcut here that points to our directory that is elsewhere where it's pretending to be that same directory so whichever way you did it um, our mod is linked to the game and through the launch options we've done that and it also knows that we're trying to load a mod because of the mod data path so when I actually launch this now and I can click on any one of these and I'll just teleport into the future a few seconds and I'll show you that our mod is indeed working in its current state. So here we are, our intercept is about to pop and if we select it, yeah we see its speed is much higher than it usually is. Uh, the base speed of interceptors in this game is I think 300 and something or other. So having it all the way up at 522 um, with no upgrades, we don't even have a research module. Um, yeah, so our mod is loaded and it's working as, as expected. Now, you might be thinking, well, this is all great, and having these files, which I can just use as a reference tool, having these accessible is extremely useful to figuring out how you even start making your mod. But it's still not completely obvious. Um, here on the wiki, github.com, homeworld remastered, Karos graveyard slash wiki, this is where you should head if you want to know pretty much anything. This is about as much as we do know. Um, there are a couple of extra resources. For example, in the official Discord, there is a channel for modding. Um, don't harass people for, with questions and stuff, but feel free to just openly ask things here. I'm always popping in and out of this chat, so I'll probably be able to help directly. Um, and there are some tutorials here on Keras as well. All of this is good stuff, and that in combination, I think, the files that we unpacked just a minute ago, having all of these files available for you to copy and reference is another in itself huge resource. That's why I stress that you should really get this done for yourself. And having it explorable in code, just with Control P, you can type the file name in, or you can press Control Shift F, and you can look up a certain code thing that you need to figure out, see how they use it in the base files, and then use it in your own mod. So the last thing we're going to talk about is how to publish this mod to the workshop, share it with our friends, and we can even play it online. The way we do that, and it's it's quite simple, um, is we need to go back to our Gearbox Tools workshop tool directory, and in here is something called workshoptool.exe. We can double click on this one, thankfully, and it just gives us a window, which is itself a command prompt, which is kind of weird. Anyway, this is a tool that can package up our mod into its own big file and then publish it to the workshop with some configuration. We actually do need to provide a couple of extra files to our mod so it can be consumed by this tool. The first one is called config.txt, just like this. Config.txt. And I'm not gonna type all this out. I've just got one pasted from earlier. So you need these these things basically title tags game type mod type big file name workshop id description your big file name should be something roughly descriptive um we've called ours fast ints let's let's reflect that let's just call it the fast ints mod fast ints so it's going to get all packaged into a file called fast ints.big and importantly the workshop id has to be zero when we're trying to publish this mod for the first time the next thing we need is a 512 by 512 uh, PNG. So let's let's create a masterpiece here. Let's have a, an angry man. Nice. So to create my mod, I just type create, and then I need to give it the directory that it's going to consume. Now, the easiest way that I find just to copy the mod from wherever you've got it, put it in this directory workshop tool, and. We'll, then we'll, uh, we'll just consume it from here. So that should work. Yep, all good. And after this is done, we can just delete that. We could have also used a symbolic link trick like I showed you a minute ago. Um, it's completely up to you. Mainly though, this is an uploaded mod. So we've, we've started with nothing, we found the right files, we edited the right files, achieved the result we wanted, now we've uploaded it to the workshop, and we can play this online and share it with other people. Let me show you it in the workshop. So back over in Steam, let's actually take those properties off so that we know we're not cheating. So there we go, they're off, so this is just running the normal game now. So we'll go into Workshop, and My Files, 
and a little too fast int mod. Brilliant. So it's right here with our angry man, and we've got to subscribe to it. And let's also change its visibility to unlisted or something. Great, so if we now go and try and run the game, we have the mods down here, we click that, wait just a second for them to load, and here it is, yeah, Hummel 2 Fast Int Mod with the Angry Man. I'm going to launch that and catch you in-game in a couple of seconds and I'll show you that everything's working as expected. So here we are, intercepts of squadron complete, and yep, 522. So we th we're not running the mod that we have on our local file system. We uploaded it to the workshop, and now here it is presented to us as a big file that's come from a mod. Now, importantly, the tool that we ran to upload that to the workshop edits if the fast ends. This is our mod. It edits our config. So you remember that the workshop ID was zero before. Now it's whatever this is. So we're gonna need to make sure that we keep that in sync. So if we do config text and we paste it over what it was before. We'll never had, have to edit this again, so we don't have to worry about constantly keeping this in sync. This is now our workshop ID forever. If you do end up losing that number, don't worry about it. You can just run the workshop tool, and there's a command list, and that'll list any mod that you've uploaded before, and it'll tell you what the workshop ID is for that mod. So don't stress about it too much. And yeah, that's gonna be it. Um, there's a lot still to cover, and a, a lot more detail to go into. I plan to release a couple of videos that go over some basic topics in more detail than I think there are tutorials for right now. So stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.